everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Hats Off Podcast by 17 Hats. I'm your host, Amanda Ray, and here at the Hats Off Podcast, we dive into raw and unfiltered business experience that hopefully you not only enjoy to listen to, but you can learn from as well. And today we are talking about, gosh, the super important topic of emails, okay, of emails, email inbox, responding to emails, email management, let's just say it, it sucks, nobody likes it. Um, it, we don't want to start our day with it. We don't want to end our day with it. It sucks up so much of our time on a daily basis. Um, but I'm going to go one step further and say the constantly dealing with email is the first step of, of many towards the burnout of solopreneurs. Solopreneurs never feel like they can handle their inbox, right? It is constantly going. And when I talk to solopreneurs all the time, they will um, tell me, I just, I feel all I do is do my inbox. All I do is answer emails. All I do is respond to emails. Um, and then they also pair that with, I feel completely out of control in my business. I feel like I've lost control. And the two go hand in hand because when we look at inbox and we look at emails, um, it's a it's a leading indicator for me of how people are handling their business. Do they have processes in place? Are they following the processes that they have in place? Are they using automation? Are they um, using other resources and tools to help them um, stay on task and um, just, gosh, moving and grooving with their business? And usually when um, I'm talking to somebody and you know they're really having a hard time with emails, that tells me a lot of times the systems aren't set up, right? They're not set up and they're definitely not using automation. But there's one, one key point that I want to hone in on and talk about today. If you're feeling like you are in this bucket of emails are ruining your day and just burning you out and you just hate sitting down at your desk because you know you have to answer emails. Um, the thing that I want to talk about today is going to be called proactive communication. So there's all different types of communication styles, but one is called reactive communication and one is called proactive communication. Reactive communication is when you are constantly being hit with questions and you are constantly having to answer them, right? So what sucks about reactive communication is that you never know when questions are going to come in. You don't know what type of questions they're going to be. Um, you know, you are constantly tied to emails or text messaging or what, however you're communicating with your leads and your clients. Um, because you are constantly reactive to their questions, their expressions, you know, all of their stuff, you never get downtime. Your anxiety is charged. You're constantly charged all the time, right? You're performing at a level 10, your stress and anxiety, chaos level 10. Because even when you sit down at your computer and you don't even know if they've emailed you yet, you're going, oh, I wonder if somebody's emailed me. I wonder if there's an email in there that I have to respond to. So you're always kind of in this background because you have reactive communication. Um, you're always in this background, a little bit nervous about what is going to pop up in your inbox. Most businesses start, most solopreneur businesses start with reactive communication, right? Because we're figuring out this whole business thing. We're trying to learn what this business thing is. We don't really have um, our client experience nailed down. We don't have automation nailed down. And so the majority of us start off with reactive communication. So if you are in that boat of reactive communication right now, clients are just emailing you all sorts of questions and you're just responding all the time, it's okay. Most people start that way. But in order to calm the chaos, right, and take control back of your business and feel comfortable at your desk again and look in your inbox, we have to switch the reactive communication style to a proactive communication style. Because when you have a proactive communication style, you are getting, giving all the information that you need up front, right? Or that they need up front. And you're doing it in a timely way and you are doing it in a bite-sized way. Those are two really important words, timely and bite-sized. And um, 
you are meeting them where they're at in your client experience. So they're not constantly coming with you with questions. Okay. You are making sure they have the information they need when they need it. And that's the important thing is when they need it. I hear a lot of people all the time saying, well, I do proactively communicate. I send them this long email of all the stuff that they need. They're never going to read it. They're still going to be reactive because the email that you sent them is too long, right? In today's world, right? We don't read and we definitely don't read long, long paragraphs, but we do read a few sentences. We read listicles, right? There are certain types of um, content your clients and your leads will read. And so it's on you to figure out what type of content that is. So you have to make sure when you proactively communicate, you're not just creating one long form piece of content and expect them to remember it, right? It's about delivering small pieces of content when they need it. So with proactive communication, one of the first steps you would want to do is kind of set out your experience and go, okay, what do they need to know and when do they need to know it? Okay. One of the things that I love um, to do is that when I have a client or if I had a lead that is upset with me, right? And this was back in the day when I did um, photography, but if I had a client or a lead that is upset, you would sit there and go, what could I have done better? How could I have communicated better? Right? Don't just write it off as, oh, well, they didn't read. Okay. Or they didn't do what I tell them to do. Right? That, that, you, that doesn't cut it. Right? We're the professionals. They're paying us. So we have to look at it as, what could I have done better? How could I have said this better? How could I have informed them better? Um, when should I have talked to them about this? Maybe it was something I should have talked to them about six, month, six weeks ago so that they could have been prepared. Maybe it was a simple reminder that they needed the day before so that they could have been prepared. But what is it that I could have done instead of blaming the client or blaming the lead? What is it I could have done to made this, um, this whole experience better? So when you start looking at your client experience and your lead experiences that way, you're going to start to know right away um, where you should be communicating at. So a lot of things you can do is turn those reactive communication. So when a client emails you and says, hey, what time am I supposed to show up? You go, oh man, I should be sending a reminder email. And then if the client says, well, what am I supposed to wear? What am I supposed to bring? These are things that need to be in that reminder email, right? So every time you get a reactive communication, you need to figure out how to turn that around into an email sequence for proactive communication. This is why people love 17 Hats workflows is because you can create these very proactive dialogues automatically. And so you're not having to type everything in and send it. Everything is just emailed directly for you. Okay. This is like the big, the big thing people love 17 Hats for. But that reactive communication going to constantly have you change to your, chain to your desk. So that is why you have to have proactive. So that's one way of kind of figuring out how to um, start moving from reactive to proactive, right? Looking at all the reactive questions that you're getting and moving them into a proactive sequence. Um, the next thing you have to be like a little bit um, cognitive of is going to be bite size and relevant. Um, a lot of times we like to give our leads and our clients so much information from the start, right? From the beginning, it's like all in their contract or you gave it to them all as a lead, right? But the reality is, is they don't need all that information right then. Okay. There is, um, you, you really have to think about when is this piece of information relevant, right? Because if it's not relevant, they're not going to remember. Human beings remember, you know, 20% of a conversation, that is like statistics, right? You are going to remember 20% of this podcast. Any conversation you have with somebody, typically 20% is what you will remember, what you will retain. So if you know that going in to working with leads and clients, every email communication, you have to think about what is the 20% you want them to remember and how are you going to make sure that they remember that 20%? So if you're sending them 
a long email about everything, one, they're going to only retain 20%. And two, you don't know which 20% they're going to retain, right? So you're setting them up and you are setting yourself up for failure. So by looking at your communications and saying, what is relevant right now? What do they need to know right now? So from your service that you're providing, the day before the service, what do they need to know that day? A week before the service, what do they need to know the week before? Two weeks before, three weeks before. There might be some weeks they don't need anything. Cool. There might be a whole month that they don't need anything. Cool. But start stepping back from your date of service. Start stepping back and saying, what is it that they need to know at this time? Do they need to prep for something? Maybe that needs to happen a month before, three months before. Do you need information from them, right? If so, if you're in the wedding industry, maybe you need locations and bridesmaids and groomsmen's name and all sorts of stuff like that. This is a perfect example with relevant. And again, if you're in the wedding industry, um, you know, I see a lot of people in the wedding industry asking the bride nine months out, well, who's doing your cake and who's doing this and who's doing all of your, who's all your vendors? Give me all of those names. And there's a good chance at nine months out, they don't have all the names right yet. They haven't figured it all out. So you're asking them to give you information that they don't know that creates stress on them. They're going, oh my gosh, should I know this? Should I have done this already? Should this be completed? Am I, am I behind? Am I, am I falling behind? So you're creating chaos on them that you don't even know that you're creating, right? Because again, you're the professional. They hired you as the professional. So if you're saying, hey, where's this information? And they're saying, I don't have it. They think they're failing. Some of you might be going, well, that's a little dramatic, Amanda, but it's true. It's true, especially to a bride who's stressing already because it's just a stressful time. So looking at that questionnaire that you send about who's all of your vendors and maybe giving it three months early instead of six or nine months early, because at three months, four months, they're going to have all that information, most brides, right? So relevant, relevant is a key word with proactive communication, because if you try to communicate too soon on something, they either won't remember or you're causing stress and your experience is supposed to be seamless, right? It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be stress-free. You're supposed to be taking away stress, not adding stress. So whenever you look at relevant, you have to think about, or whenever you think about the word relevant in communications, you have to go back and plan a little bit. Think about the journey they are on. Think about the journey your clients and your leads are going through. Put yourself in their shoes and say, gosh, if this was the first time I was doing this, what would I want to know? The other thing about relevant too is to think about like your most perfect, the most perfect service you've ever completed with a client, right? The most perfect service. So think about that, that client that just showed up perfectly, was kind, um, valued you for your, your service and the value and expertise that you brought to the table. Think about that person. Okay. Think about that experience and say, what was everything that went right? And why did it go right? Right. Maybe it's because they had knowledge on styling and they showed up and they were styled perfectly. Maybe they had, you know, maybe you're a balloon artist and they were just, they had everything down to the detail, right? They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were wanting, right? Um, so then once you think about those characteristics of that ideal service and that ideal client, think about how you can go back and prep somebody to be exactly that. What prep do you need to do a few weeks before or months before, depending on your profession, that you can ask them questions, you can have conversations, 
Maybe they can send you Pinterest boards. Maybe you can give them a blog post. Um, What is it that you can do to guide them and prepare them to get to that ideal state, that perfect state? Because for a lot of people, they do want to show up perfect. They do want to show up and I don't like the word perfect. So that might be, that might be a little much, but they do want to show up to have a good experience because they're paying you for that. But what we forget a lot of times is that, um, sometimes we have to guide them along there, right? We have to guide them. We have to remember that we're the expert in the room. And for many solopreneurs, that's really hard right? Because we don't, we don't even look at ourselves like, like the expert. Um, when I was doing my, I think it was like my first year doing wedding, wedding photography, I was, um, photographing this beautiful wedding and I went to go set the bridesmaids up, um, in the groomsmen to take a picture of the bride and groom afterwards. And, um, there's always, you know, there's always that one bridesmaid for those of you who are in the wedding industry. That's like, shouldn't I be over there and this person be over there and that person be over there. And the other bridesmaid looked at her and was like, will you quit? She's the professional. Let her do her job. And I was like, thank you. But oh shit, I'm the professional. Like fudge. Right. That was kind of my first. And again, I was a very new photographer, very new photographer at the time, but that was my first, like, oh crap. Like, of course you put yourself out there in a professional way. You, um, think of yourself as a professional, you're building this business. Like there, there's all of that. I'm going to be professional. Right. Um, but then there's actually standing in the shoes of the professional, right? Standing tall, being assertive, um, knowing that, you know, what you're doing, being confident in your skill, valuing you as a expert and then driving the experience, right? As professionals, professionals drive the experience, walk into, to Disney world, Disneyland, walk into high end restaurants, walk into target, right? Any place that you walk into drives an experience. And so when you are moving from reactive to proactive communication, This is a way of stepping into the shoes as a professional and driving the experience that you wish to create for your clients and leads. So much, right? We talked about so much today, but I want that to sink in because, you know, there's so many facets here, right? We started with um, (laughs) inbox, right? Inbox and craziness of inbox and constantly being chained to your desk because of your inbox and anxiety because of your inbox. Um, but really it, if you're having that reactive communication, um, the bigger issue, bigger problem, the bigger item we need to solve. It's not really a problem. It's just the item we need to solve to level up your business is stepping into the shoes of being a professional and driving the experience. And you do that in many, many ways, but one way is through proactive communication, right? And remember with proactive communication, we talked about bite-sized communication, meaning keep it nice, short, and sweet. We talked about relevant, right? When they need to know it, um, all really important things to consider when chopping up your communications and sending them over. And then of course, 17 hats is always there to help you automate that with your workflow, because that's the hardest. You don't want to be stuck constantly sending emails to people all the time, right? Using automation to get those emails delivered when they need to be delivered, that is going to be the best of the best. So I hope this little 20 minute podcast helped you a little bit understand the difference between reactive and proactive and um, easy action steps, right? start turning all of those reactive emails into proactive emails, right? You have a, somebody asked you a question, say, how do I get this? How do I get this answer to them sooner? Because if one person has the question, more than likely the majority of your clients have the question as well. So thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Hats Off podcast. And um, I look forward to chatting with you all again.